Okay, you've managed to sneak off down to Tasmania, but not only that, you've managed to sneaky, sneakily keep it under your hat all these shows we've done together uh, that you're going to be captaining a certain Poonam Yadav. Uh, bit sneaky, Jess? Huh? I know. Um, I have my tricks. Um, I'm very, <laughs> very, very excited about that. I hope she gets a crack in one of these, um, I think, well, yeah, tomorrow. Now we're at the business end. It's almost all over. I, I can you believe it? This series has flown by. We certainly did have a, a very interesting game tonight. So let's get on with the show and talk about it. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to our review of the second T20 International between Australia and India for Sporting News. I'm joined as always by Jess Jonathan, who has fled Queensland uh, because of the bad weather, I believe, and is now down in Tasmania where we know the weather's always warm and sunny, right Jess? Yeah, very warm. Um, I mean, <laughs> I thought I escaped like for the better but I mean such a beautiful place Tasmania is but the cold and I do not mix very well <laughs> well uh, luckily you had you had something to, I'm sure you you weren't cold watching uh, that T20 international because it was certainly enough to yeah it was a bit like that wasn't it boy oh boy it was uh, probably no. a different match to what we were expecting um it, it was it was brilliant in the end but it, it didn't it almost didn't look like it was going to be no, I mean, even, yeah, probably the first half of India's innings, probably up until the last couple of overs, to be fair, that, um, yeah, I was left sort of pretty disappointed with how um, India's batting um, sort of turned out. But, yeah, it's sort of, I think you mentioned off air that the innings from both sides almost seemed to mirror each other. And, um, yeah, it ended up making for a really good game. And sometimes those sort of... Um, lower totals um, mm. can sort of actually almost be harder to chase because some teams sort of end up chasing the total as opposed to just playing the way that they naturally play and being aggressive. And, um, yeah, it sort of proved to be a real tight one and probably a game that I think this series has deserved um, the whole way mm. along in the sense that both sides have been so close the whole way. And, um, if anything, I think India's sort of led from the front in a number of ways. So I was a little bit shocked to see them come out the way they did. But, I mean, you can never judge a pitch until both teams have batted on it. No, uh, absolutely. Cricket makes fools of all of us at times, doesn't it? Because I definitely thought the same thing. Uh, now, if you're joining us live, and thank you. I can see the comments already starting to come in, comments and questions. So please, if you have any, drop it into the live chat. We'll get to as many as we possibly can. Uh, but let's let's talk about the the start of that match and the start of that innings. India aggressive coming out, playing all sorts of shots. Um, some pretty, uh, I guess, questionable choice of, of shots in there, uh, and the wickets tumbled as a result. And I guess also you'd have to look at that running between the wickets and the communication there, Jess. Yeah, I mean, there were a few sort of cardinal sins, as you'd sort of say, um, the running between the wickets for one. There's obviously those couple of runouts, and there was a few where the batters actually turned blind. So in the sense that they, when they tapped into the crease, they were turning with their back towards where the ball was coming from. So it sort of was one of those things that, um, yeah, that could make the difference sometimes. But, yeah, I mean... <laughs> You can't really criticise too much the way that the Indian batters sort of came out in terms of their aggressive intent, that obviously the likes of Shafali Verma and Smriti Mandana and even Harmapreet Kaur, we talk about their aggressive nature and their ability to sort of take the game on. And um, even Jemmy Rodriguez, in, in a sense, that how she played and batted in that first T20 that was washed out, um, that, that was almost their blueprint of going about it. But... I think sometimes when teams and players bat that way, it's not always going to come off, particularly in T20 cricket. So um, it sort of was was a bit challenging for them, I think, in the sense that there was nobody really to sort of play with that aggressive mindset but also take minimal risks. So it was almost like every option was a high-risk option. But in saying that, I, I believe that the Australian bowling lineup got their 
areas, their lines and their lengths much better this time around than they did in that first T20. Um, the first T20, they were bowling sort of too short, too wide. Jemmy Rodriguez, mm. for one, was using the pace, whereas tonight they seem to attack the stumps a lot more and force the batters into that mistake. And the Australian fielding was absolutely phenomenal as well tonight. So um, you sort of put that in amongst bowling good areas where the fielding backs it up as well. And that really builds that extra pressure that then forces the batters to to take a risk that's overly aggressive as opposed to one that's sort of on or um, sort of you have that opportunity to take it in that moment. Yeah, it, it seemed to me, and I, you know you know all these players so well, but Australia's all body language, they seem to just look different when they came out tonight in that, that they, they looked determined, they looked sharp. It was like that had some kind of reset. Did it look that way to you? Yeah, it did. And I think that the tone was set from very early on. Um, and it's sort of those sort of things just rub off on, on your teammates as well. And I think they probably would have had a bit of a talking to sort of during, or it's probably not necessarily a talking to, probably just within themselves knowing their fielding for one hasn't really been the standard that um, I guess we sort of set for ourselves as a squad. And um, each and every player would have put their hand up and wanted to make a difference tonight. And you could see that from a couple of amazing diving efforts from Elise Perry on the on the boundary, um, a few from Ash Gardner, which is sort of standard. And obviously, yeah, that, that catch from um, Nick Carey early yeah, on, yeah. I think she was actually one of the, the better Australian fielders tonight. I think she um, really sort of cut down some twos from the, the boundary as well as taking that, that good catch to dismiss the dangerous Mandana. But, um, yeah, it's probably when, when a series is on the line, um, yeah, it's definitely you always get the best out of this Australian setup, and um, they probably showed that tonight. Yeah, that, they they absolutely did. You can see you can see definitely see a difference. Um, I'm just bringing up a comment from uh, Chobham Lunawat who says, "Been wanting to come to this show live. I finally made it. Well done, Chobham. You finally made it. <laughs> We're here for you." Um, uh, well, let, let's talk about India lost all those wickets. Uh, they had ha obviously Harman Preet sort of made a few runs, but that innings by Pooja Vastraka uh, was really stunning, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. And I think for me, I've actually been on the receiving end of a few of her biggest sixes. So I know what it's like and I know how hard and how far she can hit a ball. And um, it was really vital. And I think particularly after that mix up with Deep D Sharma, which saw Deep D being run out, I think Pooja really needed to take it upon herself to to make a difference, I think, with the bat. And obviously it was made a bit more challenging with losing wickets down the other end or not really having a, a partner to sort of go along with her in that sense. But I actually think as well, Guy Cord played a very important role at the end with her there, just sort of blocking out deliveries or um, even leaving balls, which you don't often see in T20 cricket. But um, it actually allowed Pooja to, to attack when she needed to and um, – it would have been really nice to see if she was able to come in under better circumstances to to be able to finish off an innings like that. Imagine if she came in as the next batter after that first game batting effort from the Indian side. I mean, Australia could have been chasing more than 200 if that was the case. But, um, yeah, she's a quality batter and it just goes to show the firepower that um, this Indian lineup possesses. Yeah, so it was incredible shot that she played there. It was lovely to watch. Now I can see a lot of questions coming in about uh, India's tactics at the end. We are going to get to that. Uh, I'm really interested to hear Jess's thoughts on that. But uh, let, let's bring up one, one uh, question from Rohan Sharma who says, how good was that ball swinging in to get Elisa Healy out? I can't use expletives, but it was leaping <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. Shika Pandey with the pyrotechnics. Uh, I, I mean, that, that's just one that you, you'll watch again and again and think, how the hell could anyone play that shot, that ball? I know. I think that delivery is getting any batter out. Um, the fact that it literally took the top of the bale as well. And um, it was an incredible comeback from Shika Pandey, obviously getting hit for, for a four, the very first ball. And to come back with a delivery like that, um, absolutely incredible. I think that 
emoji where the there's they're just standing there with their hands by their face and their mouth wide open that was me watching it <laughs> um absolutely incredible and i think it it's always an exciting time when the ball is swinging um i mean particularly for the bowling side maybe not so much for the batters but uh, it definitely makes for exciting viewing and um, we sort of saw as well, there were a few other deliveries that she could bowled that, um, mm. well, I think one almost bowled Meg, um, and a few others that, uh, yeah, really sort of, I guess it sort of really messed up the way that the Australian batters were wanting to play that, that one delivery from her to bowl Healy really put an immense amount of doubt in the rest of the batters coming in. And, um, mm. yeah, she was sort of all over that, that Australian top order, which, not many people can do that and it was really incredible viewing yeah and obviously she this is the first time i've seen her i mean you wanted to see her i know throughout that and i get magna seeing play so well in t20s that i guess you you could make the argument that she definitely deserved to be there for the test match so i, I guess what what we should what it shows is there is some real competition now um, within the sort of Indian swing and, and pace bowlers, uh, like after Jewel and Goswami too. Yeah, and that's, I think, the most exciting part about it. We've always seen some pretty good depth in the Indian spinning um, attack, but the fact that we've got a couple of up-and-coming um, seam and swing bowlers in this Indian um, setup is actually really exciting and it's a really good position for their squad to be in, I think, leading into such an important year with the 50 Over World Cup coming up that, um, I mean, as much as I would have loved to see Shikha Pandey in, in those ODIs, it's sort of, I think I was really surprised initially that she was left out with someone so experienced who has actually genuinely performed quite well against the Australian team, particularly having a lot of left-handers in our order as well. That, um, yeah, I was sort of surprised. But the way that Magna Singh came in and performed, uh, I, I agree with you that it's sort of she deserved that test spot as well. And it's one of those things that you sort of – you got to look at the balance of the team as well. You don't want too many fast bowlers equally. You, you want enough batters and, and whatnot. So, I mean, it's not – it's always a nice position for a selection panel to be in uh, with a squad that you're leaving people like Shikapandi out um, of the side. But then equally, it's exciting when she comes into the side and has a performance like she did with the new ball tonight. And it might have fired her up a bit too. The fact that she hadn't played till, you know, this this point, yeah. um, you know, to see to see her bowl like she did. Is it is it fair to say that, that the Australians is, said bowls they, they were bed lines and they were a lot tighter in this India seemed to get the ball to do a bit more yeah I think so I think it's probably down to the type of bowlers that each side has that obviously Australia has a little bit of extra pace in the, in the sense of Taylor Valamic um even Elise Perry was still swinging the ball as well but I think it's probably down to the fact that um yeah, it's just that different type of bowling and whether it's the ability for a slightly better seam position, it would have been very interesting um, to see if Annabelle Sutherland had a crack for the Australian girls after seeing a lot of vision of how perfect her seam position was during the test match that she could have potentially extracted a bit more swing. But I think it's sort of, yeah, it, it comes down to the type of the, the bowling and who knows that the Jew um, could have played a factor as well, but that was sort of becoming a bit more prominent during the, the second innings of the game. So I think there would have been a few factors to it. But, um, yeah, it's sort of, I think it's sort of one of those things some some people have, that's their strength, is to, their ability to swing the ball. Others is their pace. But um, on your point in and around how fired up she was, it, it's no surprise that, that she was that excited and that fired up because we saw it in Jemmy Rodrigues as well the other night, as well as Taylor Valemic. So you've got these girls that have been itching to get back out on the field after a long, long time off. Um, so it's really nice to see that passion out there from both sides. Yeah, that's a that's a good point um, about Jemmy as well, just a, the, on the two of them. Uh, now to bring in our, fi uh, the, our next topic, I'm going to to also uh, bring up Am Amesh Yadav, who asks, is there a law that a greatest Aussie side must have a McGrath? How does it feel to have spinning, uh, well, this is a spinning track, uh, 
I guess I'm not sure about the last bit about it being anything about being anti cricket or anti spirit of the game, but but the whole point about uh, having having a McGrath because Talia McGrath was the one who really stood tall for Australia, 42 off 33. It was such a calm and sort of level headed, mature innings, and it's the first time she's batted in a T20 international, which seems insane, but she's been so impressive across the whole series. Yeah, she has been. And I think it probably, from all reports, speaking to Megan Shute, that um, T-Max had a, a, a really good pre-season and has worked exceptionally hard. And um, I think she sort of benefited from doing that work and having that opportunity. And I think as well that she was sort of found, a, she found herself into the Australian setup a, a number of years ago and then sort of got, got a few injuries. But I think coming back in the, for a second time is actually that that first stint in the Australian side has actually helped her a lot in terms of she's gained a lot of experience without necessarily being out on the field. Um, and she's just got such a calm head and she's such a calm natured person. So it's no surprise that in high pressure, pressure situations that she actually comes out on top and she, she seems to fully back her ability, knows her strengths and really just goes to them under under pressure whereas we see some teams or some players that um, when they are under pressure that's when they crack and we probably saw that in a couple of the Indian dismissals tonight as well um, which sort of probably showed that little bit of inexperience but um, it also shows the youth and where they're at that they're just willing to to try and take the game on wherever they can and um, yeah I mean to see T-Mac perform the way she did um, tonight particularly with the bat was yeah, really great, and it's really good. It shows, I guess, really good signs for the Australian Australian team also leading into the World Cup. I mean, it's going to make my job a hell of a lot harder um, coming back in, trying to to break into that higher up into that batting order. But um, yeah, she's been exceptional um, this series. So hopefully, she she can finish it off tomorrow and then score no more runs during WBBL against the Heat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. I like this cat fight. Cat fights on. Um, I, I, I do know. So I do love the fact that I've had both you and Megan shoot on this, and you guys have got so many mentions in commentary. So I've, I've been l loving the fact that everyone has been missing you. Uh, so don't worry. Now let's let's bring oh, up the nice. end of <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. Um, it's been been my gain. Um, let's talk about just the end of India's innings because there are a few comments on here one from Rohan Sharma pace off the end of the innings a big mistake would have gone deep D and Harmon for the last two um, and there was another one from Parishi Jane who says shouldn't deep D have bowled the 18th and the last over um, and Shikha the penultimate one um, expecting a newcomer to deliver straight away is a bit too much battling captaincy well what did you make of that now that you are captain heat captain yourself yeah, I agree 100%. I think that pace was proven to be the easier, um, I guess, type of bowling to hit all night, um, particularly in the second innings where that dew came in. The ball really skidded a bit more for the pace bowling, whereas for the, the spinners, um, their ability for their changes of pace and the subtle changes of pace actually brought about a lot of the Australian wickets. We saw um, Guy Quad was turning the ball a little bit as well. Harmon obviously has a few tricks up her sleeve with the the leg spinner that's actually turns the same way as their off spinner anyway. Um, has that real, real fast one um, that she managed to get the wicket of Ash Gardner who just hit it straight to point. But um, yeah, I think it was a bit of an odd choice to to go with any of the seamers. I think Shika really did the the work um, early on with the new ball. And as I touched on before, that's a, a strength of hers is her ability to swing the ball. Um, and I think we saw the spinners really control that middle phase of the innings and even the back phase as well. That, um, yeah, I definitely would have kept with the slow bowling and at the end to, to force the Australian batters to – to, to try and hit the ball harder or, or go across the line and whatnot. So, yeah, I mean, it's always easier from the sidelines. It's harder when you're sort of in the moment. But um, I think even in the Australian innings that um, when Meg sort of brought back Hannah Darlington or, or Nick Carey, I probably would have brought back Taylor Valamic with that, that extra pace, particularly with how many wickets down the Indian side was and just to sort of bowl fallen at the stumps and just try and clean them up. So, I mean, there's always different ways that each captain sort of approaches things. And 
Um, I mean, both Harmon and Meg are exceptional captains and people that I sort of learn off in different areas. So it's sort of, yeah, we just see the things slightly differently sometimes. doesn't make one right or wrong. Um, it sort of can come down to execution from either the bowlers or the batters on the day as well. Absolutely. And it's one of those things, isn't it, that that when it, when it works, it's genius. And when it doesn't, you know, everyone can point exactly. to it. Exactly. That, yeah. That's, yeah, that's just how the game goes. At the I end thought result, too that, um, I thought, sorry, I thought too that no. sometimes there wasn't sort of necessarily the fact that it was a, a pace bowler that was bowling instead of a spinner. Some some of it was sort of down to the field placings as well that sort of there were a few field, or whether it was field placings or execution from the bowler to that field, that there were some times where the field was sort of set up with a probably three fielders out in the leg side, so, oh, sorry, on the off side and one on the leg side, yet the bowler still bowled straight. Um, whereas for something like that, you generally um, bowl it full and wide so that they can't nest, the batter can't step across and get up and under the ball. So you essentially close down one of those areas on the ground. But, um, yeah, there's sort of just the field placings didn't quite match with where the bowlers were sort of bowling it at the end either, which sort of probably made it hard for for Harmon to, to fully defend um, in that time as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's another really good point. Um, so at the end result is that Australia are going to win this series, which in a way is, is seems kind of weird because um, uh, India, sorry, Siri just came on, which is which really distracted me. And, and my Siri is actually to be involved. <laughs> Siri did, and Siri, my Siri is as is an Indian man, so that then always just sort of throws me when I'm talking about cricket as well. Um, but yeah, the, the fact that India, the, in a way, it seems a bit unlucky. Does or, Seems a bit rough for them because they felt like they've been on top for for quite you know a significant portion of this series. That second ODI, you know, so so close um, throughout the test. The third ODI as well, and then the first T20. They've been a bit unlucky uh, with the rain and the weather at times. It, it sort of come at the wrong time for them, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. Which I think for them it would be. They'd be a little bit disappointed with that. But at the same time, I really hope that their team sort of takes a lot of confidence out of this series, regardless of whether it's sort of a win or a loss at the end of the day, that um, they've really challenged a side that's been essentially a front runner in a lot of the form or every format for for the last sort of couple of years. So to sort of really take it to Australia, um, regardless of the personnel that's out on the park, that um, you still have to show up each and every day and try and take on the opposition you get. Um, and the, I think the beauty of it is, is that this Indian team has unearthed a lot of young talent coming up that are going to play a part for them for not only this current upcoming World Cup, but future World Cups as well. So um, I hope that, yeah, they don't leave... I mean, there's probably a majority of their team staying on Australian shores, but I hope when they do finally go home that um, they're not left sort of too disappointed that um, they haven't gone away with a series win. Yeah, and, uh, I, you know, just uh, imagine uh, it looks like there might be enough depth after all for a little old WIPL. Just hashtag just saying. <laughs> make, um, make it happen, Mel, make maybe. it happen. <laughs> I'm trying, okay, like, yeah, I'm sorry, I, 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 I was looking through my phone for, for Saurav Ganguly's number and I just can't find it, damn it. Um, and speaking of, uh, you, you just said that about players staying out here. Shub, Shubham, who has been trying to get to us live for ages, asked, Jess, according to you, who would you have liked to be picked for the WBBL from the Indian team who hasn't been? Sorry for too many questions, but I want to make the most of it now. Uh, Pooja Vastraka hasn't been picked up, has she? No, she hasn't, which is actually um, relatively surprising. But I think at the same time, she's come back into this Indian team um, after a few injuries, um, and which sort of plagued her a little bit in the middle there. Um, she sort of burst onto the scene against us um, a couple of years ago over in India. Um, and then, yeah, those injuries sort of forced her sort of in and out of the side a bit. But um, she's actually been one of their best performers, I, I believe, this series. So I think if um, the WBBL team sort of still had some spots up for grabs or if this series was a month or so earlier, it would not have surprised me that she would have found her, her place in one of the sides over here. 
maybe she could sort of stay in Australia for a holiday after the series and then, you know, if there happens to be an injury to an overseas player and she happens to be here, uh, you know, who knows? Who knows? Oh, I'm sure some teams will try and make that happen. <laughs> yeah, take take a holiday. Stay out here. <laughs> but, uh, Jess recommends the the, the the Gold Coast and Queensland, maybe north, <laughs> northern part of Queensland for you, Pooja. Uh, and speaking of Pooja, Pooja Gossica uh, says, JJ, please take care of our Poonam Yadav. I'm sure you will. Without a doubt, she'll be one of the best looked after players. She's... Uh, <laughs> She'll be incredible for us and I look forward to working alongside her. She's going to be great. Oh, and look, Ananya Upendran has just jumped has jumped in um, just to ask, which one was better, Pandy's ball to Healy today or Goswami's ball to Healy in ODI number two? Pandy's, without a doubt. Yeah, yeah. You, you don't see. The other one was more like it was, it was you know, the perfect kind of, I don't know, it was more of a standard what you'd see a really mm -hmm. great bowler to do, whereas that one tonight was just ridiculous. I mean, it was it just absolutely happened. insane. The <laughs> amount that it moved, it moved more than like half, more than half a pitch. So it's, <laughs> I, it was um, crazy. Yeah, unplayable. Yeah, yeah. So it was, look, at the end of the day, India should be very happy with how they've gone. They've still got one. They've still got one T20, uh, so who knows what they might come out with there. We'll be watching that with our great interest tomorrow because it might be technically a dead rubber, but nothing has felt very dead about this series all the way through. And something tells me that uh, that India won't sort of lie down and, and take it easy for the remaining game of the series. Um, and that, yeah, so that that's it. Thank you to all of you who have been jumping on and giving us the comments and the, the feedback and everything. We really, really appreciate it. Uh, and until tomorrow, well, have a good night's sleep. I know you're down there in Tassie now and you've got to get yourself your headspace in the right spot for the <laughs> WBBL, which I'm looking forward to as well. Um, so thank you, Jess, and to the rest of you, goodbye. We'll see you tomorrow. See you.